Oh, g'day scrappers. Today I wanted to start another series of uh, depopulating circuit boards. I seem to be getting a lot of people, uh, new scrappers, coming in and obviously one of the first questions they ask is uh, what do I take off a circuit board? And um, uh, like for precious metal recovery or base metal recovery. Um, so I guess here's a low grade board and so what I'm covering today is just going to be low grade and power boards um, it's going to probably take too long to cover everything so uh, yeah I'll start off on power boards but um, yeah I can sort of imagine what a new scrapper would um, you know it'd be quite confusing when they pull out their first circuit board or power board and they say well what do I take off for precious metal recovery or or uh, copper or aluminium you know and um, so you'll get a lot of scrappers at the start they'll be taking off capacitors and um, you know and and all kinds of things hoping you know assuming that there's going to be some kind of precious metals uh, these resistors here the rainbow type resistors uh, it's a very common one that you know scrappers uh, might have gotten misinformation and uh, thinking that there's gold and stuff in there there's you know some of them might have traces of precious metals like silver or stuff like that you know um, but generally they're not um, depopulated from boards for their precious metal recovery um, uh, what the big refiners do well you know if they get any kind of they'll go for all the metals so they want the tin and the steel and the aluminium so um, that's their thing but um, anyway so um, I thought I'm, I'll just g go through a few different boards I've got some low grades power boards I've got there's even got a this really big giant power board and um, so basically what we're going for here is base metals aluminium um, copper um, that's about it we do got uh, we do have some precious metal items like on this board here I can see that there's quite a few small IC chips you know and and you know don't discard these IC chips on power boards because uh, on these old TVs because uh, they can actually have really good gold in them in fact you know in a lot of cases better gold than uh, more modern IC chips um, so okay well let's make a start I'll start scrapping one Basically, I've just got a little caddy here um, that just uh, mostly I use this one here where I throw in IC chips and I do a lot of the crystals and crystal oscillators, uh, tantalum capacitors. So it's just a handy little caddy for me to carry around when I'm just depopulating small amounts of boards um, rather than bringing out big buckets and, and so on. Um, when these fill up, I just empty them out as I go. Uh, so here, these are, are MOF sets, you know, you usually see them, uh, there's one there uh, mounted onto um, aluminium heat sinks, so they're like transistors, and they've got, even these ones here, where you don't see the legs, they've got, if you scratch the, um, the nickel plating, you'll see that they're actually copper, so, um, yeah, these um, themselves would just go as irony copper or maybe like uh, electric motors unless you actually broke off this um, plastic and the silicon that's inside to get yourself some clean copper but um, that's the more traditional type and so this bit of metal here is obviously copper with tin plate um, nickel plating could even be tin but I'd imagine it's nickel. You can see in some of them, you can see the copper actually from the top. But anyway, and also, you know, obviously I take a lot of these relays for um, silver and copper. But enough of that. Let's make a start. Okay, we're ready to go. I'm going to start scrapping this power board out. I uh, just wanted to show you this awesome plaque that uh, a guy by the name of Bill he's on YouTube as well and uh, he's a local guy and he made this out of cast 
cast iron from a sand mold and uh, just uh, it's uh, really amazing that he's it looks like it's actually machine made rather than um, cast uh, I don't know how he got the letters so sharp and so even um, obviously has some artistic talents but yeah that's out of cast iron and as you know melting cast iron and pouring it is very very difficult because you need really really high heat so yeah he just he was here uh, yesterday actually and um, he just dropped that off and I thought well wow that's beautiful I was uh, pretty busy at the time so I, I didn't have much time to chat or thank him so thanks Bill I really appreciate it I'll put it up somewhere and uh, in the workshop and um, yeah really happy thanks mate all right Let's get onto this um, power board. So in, in these power boards, <laughs> probably the only main tool is uh, just a pair of ch channel lock pliers. Um, yeah, because everyone's different, like this one, as I said, it's got uh, quite a few IC chips. Normally they don't have that many. Take this one here. This one's uh, much heavier, heavily populated, but it's usually just got one IC chip uh, and maybe a couple of small ones. But um, so this one's uh, pretty good. Yeah. All right. So how am I going to do this? Uh, I normally just do it without thinking or talking. So. Um, I'll just start with what looks obvious. I'll just pull up this. Okay. So under this board, we just got a, a little IC chip here, a little bit of wire. So these things are nothing. This is like this yellow thing. It's a capacitor. But it's not a tantalum capacitor, um, and um, yeah, these things I'm not really even sure. They're like, yeah, I can't remember what they're called. I don't really, you know, as a scrapper, you don't really have to know um, every component on the board. You know, we don't need to know the technical terms. You know, we're basically looking for uh, metal recovery. So um, all we really need to know is, does it have gold, silver, platinum, or what? So, now you've probably seen me depopulate boards with the air hammer, and I do that on um, things like um, server boards and all, and all that, where it's very straightforward, but I wouldn't do it on this, because everything's just uh, it's all over the place. So, so you don't have to worry about, you know, if the IC chips like this one here, it doesn't look like it's going to be anything spectacular. But, you know, if you break them and all that, you know, you just put them in your pile. Um, breaking them actually kind of probably helps speed up the process, uh, the recovery process anyway. So, yeah, most scrappers are not going to have a, uh, an air hammer and a compressor. So, you know, this is about the best tool you can use for depopulating. And obviously a, a screwdriver and a, and a little hammer will help. Sometimes some people like to use chisels. Um, I'm sitting down, I should really be standing up. Let me just get up there. And um, so here one's sort of busted open, we can uh, st still didn't get a good look at it. Okay, so we'll get on to the other ICs later. So we've got some aluminium here, obviously we want to take off. Um, the flyback transformer. Uh, some people get away with throwing these in the scrapyard in, the, in with your regular transformers, but uh, most scrapyards won't accept them. If they do, they just don't know what's what's what. So, 
after I remove the IC chips, usually it's 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 the copper bearing items. So all these coils have got well most of them have got copper. So this one here, this is uh, it's like a fabric over copper. Um, so it's technically insulated, but it's you know it's much higher grade because the the material is only very light. You can actually rub it off. Uh, so it's higher grade than your regular mid-grade insulated wire. Okay, and so the rest here, this is just ferrite. Ferrite is uh, like a metallic kind of, um, it's almost like ceramic in a way, um, but it's magnetic, so um, we put this in with scrap steel. Okay, so that's our insulated copper wire, technically high grade. Um, yeah, I've had quite a lot of people asking me uh, to do this, but I, I'm, I just haven't been sure how to go about it, and I st I'm still not. I'm just uh, just playing it by ear. So these are obviously capacitors. They're aluminium capacitors, so um, they aren't just solid aluminium obviously you know you've got some plastic there and inside there's that liquid i just call it capacitor juice so there's a little bit of liquid inside there um so these go as irony aluminium or dirty aluminium so uh not worth as uh, you know a great deal uh we get about 30 cents a kilo here so um yeah it's up to you whether you take these off or not some people do and they but you know it takes like hundreds and hundreds just to get one dollar worth you know um so uh, it's really up to you i t usually just leave them on the board i don't you know waste time taking them off because yeah take a long time to get any money out of them um but if uh, you don't get them any boards and you've got nothing better to do and and you don't go to um, well, I was going to say you don't go to scrapyards, but if you're selling irony aluminium, you still got to go to a scrapyard. See, like if this aluminium was useful, like I could melt it down and turn it into an aluminium bar, then it'd be okay. But because it's got the plastic and it's got the juice inside and all kinds of contaminants, it's just dirty aluminium. So uh, it's not of any use to me. So yeah, technically I just leave them on. So you've got big ones, you know, little ones here, same deal just aluminium okay and a, a lot of capacitors uh, um, a lot of new scrappers get confused with capacitors you know because uh, the two types of capacitor that we do keep are the um, the multi-layer ceramic capacitor MLCC and the tantalum capacitor um, so tantalum is uh, really confusing for most people and uh, so I'll get guys bringing me jars and bags of um, things like that capacitor there and they think oh that might be a tantalum capacitor it's not you know um, very rarely are there tantalums on a power board uh, sometimes you do get them though so as I've mentioned like you know these little brown things and all that you know they're just regular capacitors that yellow box that's just a, a regular capacitor on vintage boards there are tantalum capacitors that look like these boxes um, maybe I'll get to show you later on when we down the track um, but these ones no they're definitely just regular capacitors uh, and so what happens is some people will will bag up all this and then they'll post it to a tantalum buyer and they'll get the bad news that uh, mate you know these aren't tantalum these are not tantalum <laughs> they're not tantalum you know and pretty much everything that they've taken um, off a power board doesn't have uh, precious metal uh, recovery value to any any um, refiner or anything like that aside from obviously if you just pull off IC chips yeah um, here we've got a, a crystal you know for a little bit of silver um, but yeah so when it comes to tantalum capacitors it's more on the higher end um, electronics and very vintage stuff but uh, on these kind of boards this is just a power board from an old TV um, so anyway all right so I want to get this aluminium off I'll just put on one glove so 
what we're going to end up doing here is just pretty much ripping the whole board apart um, and what's going to be left over is just going to go as scrap steel so we'll take any value we can see so got some aluminium got to take off these steel little clips and there you go there we go so aluminium and then we've got the uh, these little aluminium heat sinks extruded aluminium so this one here is not extruded it's just a sheet aluminium it's just regular because it's just from a regular sheet and they just cut it out whereas these ones are extruded so at the same time we remove the aluminium heat sink we're also got our little moff set at the back okay so we want the moff set for our copper so it's a uh, that's tinned copper or uh, it might be nickel plated one or the other but yeah so what we've got to do is we've got to remove that black stuff it's uh, plastic and uh, silicon so we remove all that sort of stuff and uh, yeah we've got some nice tin copper not everyone collects them it's a bit fiddly but um, you know if you're just going for all kinds of metals moff sets are good and we've got the uh, aluminium heat sink you've got to take out that little bit of steel um, I always have a hard drive magnet handy when I'm depopulating sometimes they're aluminium you don't need to take it out but as you can see it's a little piece of steel so just plonk it out and now we've got our clean extruded alloy and and this kind of alloy uh, extruded is is about the best quality alloy that we can find in e-waste um, so if you're casting or melting aluminium this is about the best stuff to um, to melt with because uh, it's very clean doesn't have any contaminants and it's a very high quality aluminium again it's just black same deal we've got the moth set we want to keep him copper aluminium I'll just uh, I'll take all them okay and we'll clean all these moth sets off take them and clean it up all right so that's most of the aluminium heat sinks apart from the big one here which I'll probably just take off right now So we just got sheet aluminium, moth set there, and we've also got a, an extruded piece of aluminium here, screwed on. So we remove that because that's so the extruded, same as that, goes for a dollar thirty a kilo. Sheet goes for one dollar a kilo. So it's about thirty percent more in extruded. Flyback transformer, oh, really funny one that. When I first started scrapping. Um, scrapyards used to take them we used to just break them off and throw them in transformers and we used to get top dollar for them but a lot of uh, scrapyards um, you know obviously the big buyer um, has have gotten a whole heap of them in their in their batch and uh, they've realized that there's really not that much copper in there and I'll show you one if I can find it okay so basically it's like a solid, really hard um, plastic um, shell, and it's mostly ferrite. So, so that's all magnetic ferrite, like steel, and it goes right through this round bar part. So here's one that I busted open, and it's no no easy thing to bust one of these open to get the copper out and um but obviously scrapyards have done it to see what's inside and this is this is it so once we've got that that shell open it's just like a it's like a little transformer inside with the tape copper it's very common 
and there's about 10 layers and in between each layer is a very very fine layer of copper that you can barely take off the plastic it just breaks up okay so that's very very light fine copper and that's about 10 layers not even no it's probably about six layers and as you can see the ferrite core running straight through so it's all basically steel and this really hard plastic and um and the copper so by weight there is probably less than one percent copper content in a flyback transformer believe it or not because that that doesn't weigh any more than the plastic that it's sitting on it's so fine and um and there's nothing out it's just ferrite so it's really this these um flyback transformers are <laughs> Um, the fact that they've got a little bit of copper shouldn't wouldn't make any, any difference to um, me if I owned a scrapyard these would just go to scrap steel at best just for because of the ferrite and the copper would probably be more of a inconvenience than anything but anyway so that's flyback transformers so um, because I can't I can't sell them to my scrapyard and I don't want to throw them in try and you know sneak a few in I just leave them on the board and it goes to scrap steel you know just uh, take what value I can a little bit of wire but I just leave them all right and I'll get rid of some more copper bits uh, transformers these are only small transformers oh. but they're okay so these transformers here are actually okay to get the copper out. You can see the copper in there. There are some transformers that you get off these boards that are almost impossible to get the copper out. It's uh, very much like this where it's uh, layers of tape and copper. So I don't even bother with them. I'll, I'll show you a couple examples. Okay. Well, here's one transformer, say. And as you can see, you can see the the heavy copper inside that's going to be pretty easy to get out we just smash up this ferrite and we'll pull out all this copper really easy no problem with that transformers like that that's a whole different ball game um, yep there is pretty good copper inside but to get these open uh, it just takes a long time and some people just prefer to sell these as transformers and be done with them unless you're really desperate for more copper but you know, sometimes these are just impossible to open up. So I separate them into two. Um, even these ones here are, can be quite time consuming. So, um, and here's one that, you know, these are very common. You'll see the yellow paint, uh, the yellow sticky tape. Well, if I can show you, if you look at the difference, you see the, the copper here. Well, look at that. Where's the copper there? It's very fine, a few strands running through underneath the tape and it's just wrapped like that. So it's really hard to get that copper out and it's really messy. By the time you've done that, um, yeah, it's just not worth it. So better off selling these as transformers to your scrapyard. And these type where you see the copper exposed like that, scrap these out for the copper and you'll get better value. All right, so that was just... I was just transformers um, what else do I take off yeah there's really not I don't really pay much attention to power boards so um, this uh, video subject will get uh, probably a little bit more interesting once we get to mid-grade and then motherboards and server boards high-grade boards and all that kind of thing but I, I'm gonna start at the start I suppose um, all right so a bit more aluminium This blue box here that should be the relay. It's usually a black, but in this case it's blue. Okay, so that's our little copper spool in there. A little bit of copper. And over here is where we've got the little um, contacts. Uh, a lot of people like to keep these contacts for the silver recovery. 
you know, silver's not worth much at the moment, but one day it could be. Well, um, okay. Well, this is different. Everyone's familiar with these contacts at the relays. Keep in mind the blue covering. But you know what? They're not silver. These are either they're either brass, I doubt, or gold. I think these are gold contacts. See if we I don't know if you can see that. But they're not silver, I'm telling you now. They're they're actually gold. And uh, I doubt that they would be brass, maybe, but uh, I don't see these very often. The gold ones. There you go. Normally I would just put this away for silver, but uh, these ones might be gold plated. So that's a little bonus, uh, precious metal bonus. It's another little board here. So obviously we're taking off the, the two IC chips. This stuff is all basic capacitors. So we've got aluminium capacitors. Um, SMD kind of capacitors all these little rainbow little things they're all resistors so there's no precious me metal in them you know some might have silver as I mentioned but nothing spectacular um, it's not really known for anyone to go for them so yeah, and see again resistors and that little black um, tube with the grey stripe that's not tantalum that's a diode it's not a capacitor so diodes, again, don't have any precious metals. Some may have traces, but not that we're um, aware of or worthwhile um, recovering anyway. Uh, I don't feel I see a lot more on this board. It's more copper in there. So yeah, so those that are mostly going for, uh, uh, that scrap these boards out are mostly going for copper and aluminium. Um, and obviously the IC chips. Uh, some people will just take off the IC chips and a few things that they know that might have precious metals and they'll just sell the whole board as scrap metal. Um, so again, we've got the insulated copper wire in that little coil. Um, yeah, and these these brown things, these brown things are capacitors, um, you know, they're not um, tantalum or anything like that, so there's basically aluminium and who knows. Uh, so, yeah, we don't keep these. There are some that have precious metals inside, I think silver, maybe gold, um, but that's very, very specific and uh, the chances of you finding them. And they're not going to be on these kind of boards anyway. Yeah. So there's a giant one. So it's just a capacitor. It doesn't have any scrap value. Okay, so you're better off just leaving it on the board. Okay. Yeah. I've mentioned the res resistors, the rainbow type resistors. So it's basically just, just like a um, ceramic-y kind of stuff. Show you. But there's, yeah, there's no gold or silver or anything like that. It's just got this little slug in there. Um, it's probably not magnetic, but I'm not sure what it is, but there's nothing really in there. So, yeah, these power boards, very little. Can't really show you anything interesting on these boards because there really isn't anything. Um, we haven't done one of these little blue ones. Some of these are really solid. And inside, so this is, you know, what I suggest to uh, new scrappers is to just bust things open and crack into it and just see if you if you don't see gold then it's not going to really have gold in it but um, 
you know so this is just like aluminium foil that's been wrapped over and over so that's all these really are there's nothing to them um you know when you see it's silver and it's shiny could it be silver uh no <laughs> they only really use gold and silver in well mostly gold in contacts and silver well silver is kind of used all over the board anyway so yeah i'm not really sure what to say there okay so yeah as i said these kind of things they're just capacitors they're they're not tantalum or they're not mlcc's um the most common ones i can't see it here i'll show on on another board are the blue ones a lot of people think the blue ones are tantalum and some are but um when we get to them i'll show you what what they um which ones actually are mosfet I see chips. So, for a power board, it actually has got a lot of IC chips. I think I'm just about done with this board. Um, you know, there's you know little bits of wire that I'll take off, take this wire off here on the end. Um, you know, I'll pull out these, but um, really, there's not a lot else on this board to take off for precious metal recovery or even copper aluminium you know still got IC chip it's another heat sink all right tiny little transformer bit of copper but yeah now I think I'm just about done with this board we'll move on to the next one <laughs> These kind of power boards, you find these in um, plasma TVs, maybe even some LCD TVs, stuff like that. Um, but he, a perfect uh, board actually to show you. See these blue capacitors here, they're the ones that I'm talking about that a lot of people think that are tantalum. Um, there's, you know, nothing to suggest there's, they're, they're tantalum and they're not. They're just, um, you know, whatever they are. Um, Yep, these flat ones. So, yeah, they're definitely not tantalum capacitors. Even, you know, they say C, yes, that's a capacitor, but it's not a tantalum, nor is it a MLCC, so you might as well just leave it on the board. Here's another, that's another version of a capacitor. Um, and we know they're aluminium, just leave it on the board. Uh, here, these also get confused for um, tantalum. Especially because they're yellow. Uh, no, the, these are actually these aren't even capacitors. They're resistors. Uh, there's even a RV. So there you go. But yep, certainly not tantalum capacitors. All right. So all we've basically got here, um, yeah, is just the aluminium. We get the copper MOF sets, the transformers, all these transformers, those coils. You know, if, if uh, you're just trying to accumulate copper, then you might as well just cut out these um, coils and just unwind the copper out of all this. You know, it's a bit, and the rest goes in scrap steel. All right, yeah, it's very straightforward, this board. Probably just the best thing to show was the, uh, the little blue capacitors that people get confused for tantalum. Um... Uh, don't know if you remember this big power board from uh, last week uh, it was out of a UPS I think and yeah again we're just going for copper so it's a very boring kind of subject depopulating power boards and low grade boards because there's really nothing on there so with these big coils they can be a little bit difficult sometimes to remove the copper because the, there's like a glue underneath but basically sometimes they just crack right out other times you need to cut the uh, copper with side cutters okay and just sort of it's really stiff copper so and then just cut it out and 
you get the drift and I just unwind it off the ferrite so this is really solid thick heavy copper number two copper sometimes um, here we sell this kind of copper it goes as burnt copper um, since there's no real burnt copper anymore well it's illegal so they just and that's just ferrite you throw that straight in your scrap steel nice heavy addition to your steel same with that so really good copper there and we can do that with all of them aluminium heat sink got the MOSFETs again strange looking capacitors no precious metals resistors no precious metals got fuses these big fuses boss man um, some some fuses can have silver but it's usually the really big industrial ones but sometimes they can have a little bit of silver you might um, take it out and pop one open and have a look yourself uh, yeah so gold recovery well we've got some gold pins so at least we can take the gold pins um, I don't uh, deal with gold pins straight away I just fill up a bucket so I just want to I just want to cut it out the problem with wearing gloves and handling circuit boards is as you know all these little ends little pins get stuck and you tear up your gloves big time um, okay. so that's it I just take the pins and I just put it in the pin bucket for another day um, obviously got transformers got these big giant things They look like sealed units, but I'll just crack one open and see what's inside. Okay. So that's it there. Just bust it open with a hammer. It's quite strong plastic. You can see inside, it's just uh, another one of those aluminium foil wrapped kind of things. So there's no copper in there. You know, it's not a relay. People looking at the big black boxes thinking, you know, um, where am I? You know, thinking, oh, it's one of these with the, uh, you know, one of these relays with the silver and the copper coil. That's not. Another one here, it's the same thing. It's just aluminium. Okay. We've almost cover it. We've got these grey boxes. We've got the blue box. Last time we'd done a blue box it had gold pins, remember? But this looks like a a different kind of box. <laughs> I would have probably taken the box out after I've removed the coils but we've already covered them. Okay, so there's a bit of copper, but not much, it wasn't a relay, it's just, um, yeah, like a little transformer or something. Grey boxes. Are these the relays? Well, I don't see the pins. Remember, most relays have got the two copper legs coming out like that there you go 
aluminium again. That's all it is. This one, same thing. It's not a relay, doesn't have the legs. So, I can safely say there's no relay on this board. <laughs> well, the ones that we're looking for anyway. All right, well, I think we've covered that board. Yeah, as I said, there's really not a lot we can show on power boards, low grade. So that's off the top of a CRT yoke, right? And so what's on there to depopulate? Well, nothing. You've got pretty little um, resistors with the little gold bands. No precious metals. Capacitor. No ca precious metals. Nothing there. Nothing there. Resistors, nothing. Um, the only precious metals are these little, tiny little um, switches. Maybe they'll have a little bit of silver in there, but they're so small. Um, but yeah, a lot of people like to keep tactile switches, so you can just, you know, take these off. Yeah, no, these, I don't think these are even switches. So, yep, what do you do with that? It's just pretty much scrap metal, unless your scrapyard takes circuit boards, sell it as a low-grade board. That's all it is, low-grade. So that's, that's it. So, yeah, pretty much the same thing. We repeat everything over. Some bigger items here. We've got a few more... You know, we've got these uh, video sort of jacks. A little circuit board inside these. Sometimes you'll get an IC chip. Um, usually you get, here's some crystal. There's a crystal there, a crystal there. You can take out. Also, you've got little, tiny little copper spools. You know, but if you're trying to accumulate copper, you can take all these little copper coils out. Um, it all adds up. Same with this one. It's almost like it's like an old version slot card. It's just uh, slots in. There we go. You know, nice little selection here. Got a uh, crystal. Nice clean crystal. Beautiful. We got a really nice Phillips IC chip here. Okay, and a offset and so here's a capacitor again a light blue one people always confuse these with tantalum they're not tantalum I uh, don't know what these twin bar things are but there's nothing there and the other side nothing so we still got offset and the IC chip to take out of there you know so they all vary And, uh, but all pretty much very similar. You know, you've seen these copper coils. They're good for copper. Um, just uh, smash up the copper, the uh, ferrite and plastic, and we get these out. Steel. Beautiful. Well, there we go. So, yep, pretty much the same thing. Just repeat it over and over. There's a big capacitor. It's just, uh, as I said, it's uh, aluminium. And inside there's a liquid. Uh, only uh, worth uh, ironing aluminium. There you go, Bill. 450 by 560 so even on an old television these ones oh, I'm, I'm speaking to one person now that uh, was interested in these capacitors anyway um, all right well there you go so we've got copper 
aluminium, copper on them offsets. Yeah. IC chips, not a whole lot on these um, low grade boards and uh, you know, quite boring really to scrap out for me and uh, probably for most people to even watch. So I think I've gone on enough about these. Want to get into the more exciting stuff. Even mid-grade boards, uh, there's so much ver variety and variations and uh, yeah, and get onto the uh, motherboards and heavier grade stuff. Um, but for those guys that are, are, are new to scrapping and um, just wondering what we're sort of looking for on boards or what we're depopulating, um, well now you know low-grade boards and power boards, we're just basically going for the base metals, copper, aluminium and stuff like that and um, but we do keep our an eye out for IC chips uh, crystals and stuff like that uh, for um, precious metals but uh, yeah when when I look at one of these boards I'm just thinking copper and aluminium I'm not really focused on but as I said these IC chips on the brown boards really worth taking because uh, depends how you um, get it bust them out um, if they bust open you'll see a lot of these will have quite really good gold um, bonding wires and so on in there but um, alright well guys uh, well it was the first go at um, depopulating by hand this way and trying to explain it so I, I'm pretty sure that my next video on with mid-grade boards um, will be a little bit more interesting but uh, for the new guys I hope that was a little bit of help if you've got any questions just ask but um, yeah, as I said, most of the stuff on power boards is just base metal stuff. Alright guys, well keep scrapping, have fun, and I'll catch you next time.